riches be given unto the children of Israel. All right, and that's going to be uh, a part of our, 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 um, our riches. Okay, remember the scripture says that what well, pretty much for roughly paraphrasing for wood, it was going to be like for gold. Right, you know, that's that's how it's going to be. It's going to be that easy, it's going to be nice like that. Right, so let's go to the book of um, Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Then I'll go back onto the book of Revelation 19 and 12. So Isaiah 61 it says, Arise, for thy light is come, the glory of, of the Lord is, ris is risen uh, uh, upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen upon thee. And that's dealing with the word of the Heavenly Father that He's what? He's given unto the men of the Lord that you have out here. And we got the, you got the, we got the word. And, and through the word, the people of the world can see that we got that, 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 that shine, man. All right, that's why you might have particular situations where what? You got particular situations where you know uh, 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 demons might attack you, but you also got particular situations where uh, uh, people might see your your spirit from a distance, man. And how does the heavenly fathers put that protective hedge around you? So that 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 shine, all right, is easy. It's easily seen, so you can understand. This is is there. It's readily readily seen and readily available. You okay there, mate? All right. You know what this is all about. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So continuing here, it says. Um, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. And part of that darkness is this: these people, they don't know their nations, man. Right? And therefore, they don't know their inheritance. And that uh, evokes a certain amount of pride, especially for, 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 for these Edomites. They thinking, now the elite Edomites, they know their heritage. They know their inheritance. They know what's coming towards them. Right? Because they go into the, the various scriptures. They go into the various uh, 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 Bible precepts and they understand, all right, we're the e e Edomites. Let's try to avert the judgment that the Heavenly Father has uh, bestowed upon us. Now, but for the rest of the average Red Hebrew Edomite, they're actually thinking that what? That they continue, their, 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 their uh, houses shall continue from generation to generation. But the contrawise, their, uh, their, um, their rulership is not going to be forever and ever. Because when you read about, when you understand that there's nations within the world, first and foremost, then secondly, what you're going to understand is that not only are there nations within the world, Right, but each nation has got a particular inheritance that's bestowed upon them by the Heavenly Father. The one, the children of Israel, have got the inheritance of the whole entirety of the rulership of the earth, which we're going to read about within the book of Isaiah, the 60th chapter, right now. Right, you read about the Edomites, you find out that their heritage, just like we read within the book of Job, the 20th chapter, they was going to be removed from the earth and they was never going to be seen again. That's, a, that's like an important thing within the scriptures. The Elamites have got their own inheritance, right? In fact, when you go into the 12 tribes of Israel, each, each, each tribe has got a particular inheritance that they was going to be upon them, right? Uh, Genesis, the 49th chapter, right? Uh, um, what comes to mind? Uh, 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 Gad, a troop will overtake, or what shall overcome you, but you shall overcome at the last. Uh, Judah's like a lion's whelp. Like, you got Judah right now there, Crouching like a lion, like an old lion, but they're gonna be be, be revitalized, right? I mean, I mean, so on, and so, uh, so on and so forth, and so forth, and so on. Right? The story, the story continues. But the point I'm making is part of the darkness that's upon this earth that evokes a certain amount of pride, especially within Edom, in, in, within the Edomites, the lower classes of Edom. All right, is that the thing of of of, of the nations and nationalities that the Heavenly Father has set from the foundations of the earth, and how those nationalities actually dictate your inheritances. Okay, those nationalities that you have out there, they, they what? They, 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 they come with inheritances attached to them. Let's continue in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 60 and 3 and says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings of the earth to, thy bright, uh, to, thy, um, to, thy, to the brightness of thy rising. And we have to understand about these, the, the next piece of that I'm going to read now. You have to understand that what? There's a certain amount of conquering that you have to do before the nations uh, just stop rebelling. Now, we ain't going to be within their spirit to rebel, but nature has to take its course, right? That is to say, they, we're going to have to beat them into powder should they resist the rulership that we're going to impose upon them. The scripture says within the book of Revelation 2 and 25, uh, that which you have already hold fast until I come, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall break him as a vessel of, uh, as vessels of a pot, a roughly power for it. I mean, pretty much word for word that was on point, except for the last bit, okay? I uh, forget how the last bit goes. All right, so so you have a situation where the heavenly Father is going to give us that power over these nations, and they're going to be their spirit is not going to be within them not to bow, man. The scripture says that any nation that shall not bow before thee was going to be wiped off, and pretty much only Esau is going to be wiped off, man. Right? Uh, lift up thine eyes round about and see, or they they gather themselves together, uh, they come to thee that thy sons shall come from afar and thy doors from a, uh, uh, shall be nursed at thy side. Then shalt thou see 
and, and, and flow together and then heart shall uh, then heart shall fit and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee it's the abundance of the sea right when you go into the book of revelations i believe it's revelations the 17th chapter uh you have a, a, another uh, a, a example of the word sea being used to describe something else other than the body of wars that you call the sea and that is to say the, the, the people now is the abundance of the sea going to flow onto us and we're going to be happy why are you going to be happy if the abundance of the war is going to come to you and 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 and, 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 and spread upon you that's going to be talking about something else, right? Go to the book of Revelation uh, 17th chapter and you find out that the, uh, the, the sea that's spoken about with Revelation the 17th chapter is dealing with the uh, with the people of the earth. So the abundance of the people of the earth is what? All the different mineral resources that's been given unto them by the Heavenly Father within the particular lands that they have. Right? So there's some people that have uh, gold, vast amounts of gold within their land. That's going to be converted onto us. There's uh, particular uh, nations that have uh, 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 oil, uh, well not oil, because that, that's not necessarily going to be like a precious mineral like it is uh, right now. I mean, there might be a, a righteous use for it, but you know, I, I, I don't know the sciences behind what we're going to do with that. Okay, but continuing, you have a situation where what? All the, all the minerals that you have within the earth, they're going to be used for, uh, um, they're going to be used for other things. Okay, they're gonna be used. To, they're gonna be used for. Uh, 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 they're, they're gonna be converted onto us. The gold, the silver, right? The the, the, the diamonds, the precious, the precious, uh, uh, the precious stones and the different rubies that you have out there. I mean, you got people talking about diamonds and diamonds, diamonds, diamonds is like the lowest class of uh, 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 of stones that you have out there, right? These 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 stones out there that have such a a color and a spirit on them that look, man, it will. It will it will evoke your uh, your your spiritual man, all right. That's why these uh, that's why Esau keeps particular uh, uh, stones to themselves. I mean, it's just a stone, but the most has got particular vibrations on things. And precious stones and precious minerals have a, 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 a more a spiritual vibe about them. Now everything can be used two and two against each other. You can have stones on the left hand side and use them on the left hand side, like the gold and silver. And use it on the left hand side, and you can use it on the right right hand side. Same way you can use a, 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 a iron to make a pot to feed someone, you can also use iron to make a sword to kill the same very same person. Everything is two and two against each other. That's just how the Heavenly Father has set the thing up from the foundations of the earth. But the point I was making is that this, that the uh, forces of the Gentiles was going to be converted onto us because the Lord is going to remove their rulership, he's going to give the rulership onto us and the abundance of them was going to be imparted onto who? Onto his children, the, the, the joint heirs with him. Nice right, continuing. Um, Isaiah 60 and um, and 5 it says, and then thou shalt see and, fl and, and, and flow and together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come to thee. Right? Not only in to, to bring riches, but also to to have it to where um uh, to have it to where uh, 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 they're gonna be uh, underneath us, man. They're gonna be underneath us. They're gonna need administering. They're gonna need to uh, be ruled over. I mean, you look at the people of this earth out here. They're gonna rejoice when they, ultimately, and you've seen it in many movies. They've said it. Look, these the people of this earth. They wanna be ruled, man. They were designed to be ruled. But right? that's that's their nature. But they are. There was a particular ruling class of men that were designed to be rulers, man. That's the thing about this thing. Right, you look at Moab and you look at the, in, in the, how industrious they are and how they work and work and work and work, right? You have it to where you have a, a rulership over that, a natural leader over that, you can really turn out some real beautiful things with, with, that, with a workforce like that. Imagine how beautiful the different palaces, imagine how clean the world will be when you've got an army or, or whole Moabites just clean it. I mean, I'm just using an example. I mean, that's the best example. I, I'm just coming off the top of my head, right? So, I mean, the Lord set the thing up in a particular type of way, and this is how we set it up. All right, so let's jump down to the point. Tenth verse, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and thy king shall be and and and, and thy king shall be ministered unto. For my wrath, in, in my wrath I smote thee. So in the Lord's wrath, His anger against us, uh, what you call His indignation, righteous anger, He smote us with what? 
with uh, with the plagues that's spoken about within the scriptures, right? He smote us with what? He smote us by way of the hand, by way by by the hand of Esau, right? The, the, our natural born enemy, the right, the red Hebrew Edomites that came up against us, the children of Israel, to destroy us, right, and to destroy us as a nation, and they're still destroying us right now through systematic enslavement and systematic oppression and many other different uh, 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 um, tools that he has at his disposal, right, to jack up the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. And uh, all the Israelites scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, therefore, shall, uh, therefore, thy gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut, nor even neither day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, that, thy, that, that, uh, that their kings might be brought. And that's dealing with what? That's dealing with the resources that these heathens are going to bring unto us, right? To um, to, 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 fill, to fill our boots. So back within the book of um, uh, Revelations. Um, uh, 19 and 12 right, Revelation 19 and 12 and he says and his eyes was a flame of fire and his head was on his head was many crowns where are those many crowns coming from even as these nations were in rulership and they were in cahoots with Esau and they were doing their own thing the Heavenly Father's Son is going to remove the, the power from them and he's going to give it unto, uh, unto, unto uh, he's going to give that power unto who? Unto his uh, uh, his uh, joint heirs, the children of Israel, the elect of the children of Israel. Right? And his eyes was a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a, he had a name written that no man but himself. All right, and he had a vesture dipped in blood. Right, and his name was called the Word of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Precept in John and one one and one comes to mind with that. And he says, uh, and the armies which were in heaven. Uh, followed with it, uh, followed him upon white horses, clothed with fine linen and clean, and out of his mouth uh, goes forth a sharp uh, 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 sword, uh, that is that he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the heavenly Father. So I mean that's that's pretty much it, man. That is pretty much it. So let's go back into the book of. So I mean that's self-explanatory, right? He's gone. Take, 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 take down many nations. So I was within the, I said, um, I was going to get the book of Isaiah, the 54th chapter, because that's really the premise that I'd used to, um, to, 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 to get this video rolling, which is that, that all of the, what we're reading is the word of the Heavenly Father, and it wasn't going to return unto the, to, to, to the Heavenly Father void, right? You see, you see, certain things were set up in, and put into motion, and they wasn't going to, um, they wasn't going to, uh, the, the, the word of the Lord was going to return unto him void. So let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 54th chapter, I believe it is in. And then uh, we can expound upon that. Right, so Isaiah 54, and this is um, Isaiah 54, and um, Isaiah 54, and uh, let's start from 55. Let's go from 55 and 1, right, because um, I'll be closing out in a second. Uh, it's been a funny one, but hey, the job got done, right? Just like I said, the job gets done. <laughs> the job got done. So this is Isaiah 55 and 1. Uh, these are, the point I want is in 11, right, but the whole thing is actually quite pretty, pretty, pretty good for the times that we're living in right now. So the book of Isaiah 55 and 1, it says, Hold everyone that thirsteth. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath money, come buy and eat. Come buy and with come buy without without money, and without price. And that's dealing with uh, the word. Okay, the word is um is, is 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 the word is the word, man. You know the word is um is 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 um what do you call it? Is is free. So you can understand the word of the heavenly Father is free. Okay, and um. You know, it's uh, uh, it's it's it's, it's, uh, 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 it's out there. Okay, it's out there. All right, uh, um, and you, for you Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, it's a high time to wake up. A high time to wake up at sleep. Right, because the Heavenly Father, at any minute, right, he could take it. He could take. It, he could make this. At any minute, he's gonna have it to where this word is not gonna be so readily available. And we know that because the Scripture talks about at the time where with it's gonna be the time of uh, the famine of the word. Okay, you okay there? One. You know what this is all about? Yeah. Okay, good. 
all right? So uh, you have a situation where the Lord set up the time uh, where it's going to be the famine of the word, okay? And the time of the famine of the word is going to be what? It's going to be coming pretty soon. You got the YouTube censorship thing going on, all right? You got it to where um, uh, uh, Esau could, could jump on jump on uh, uh, brothers at any time. I mean, they know us by they know us by faces, man. They know this this brother. Look, I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you to like this, right? This is how Esau's got this thing, right? And and this video is going to go up on, on YouTube, so they'll know I know, right? But it's it's it's, it's my understanding that what. It's my understanding that from, from, from the different interactions that the brothers be having, okay, pretty much what they do is they, they're going to profile you, right? you got a, a situation where Esau has got each brother, each individual uh, camp member within Great Millstone profiled. This is what this brother is. This is, his, this is his birth name, right? This is his government name. This is the job that he works at. All right, this is his his his, uh, his police report. This is this is the this is the people. This is the this is the chicks that he's texting, right? That's 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 how they gonna profile you. This is what he said on camera. This is what we can use uh, to, 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 to 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 try to come up against them, huh? Okay, this is what we can twist to make it uh, flip into something else. They got the records, man. All right, remember the, remember remember this is a spiritual battle before it is anything else, right? If it's a spiritual battle, then the, the spirits on the left hand side they're gonna do everything to make sure that they're ready to try to take you down. So you got a situation where Esau has profiled each individual brother down to your down to your to, to, to your your most inner most uh, desires and passions, man. Right? He knows what you like. He knows what you're into. All right? He knows uh, uh, everything about you, man. All right? That's how Esau has got this thing down a lot. So when they when they come and roll up. They're gonna roll up, man. And you can better be, best believe that. And that's gonna be what? During the time of Jacob's trouble, spoken about within the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, right? Uh, 30 and uh, 30, uh, one down to, down to seven, I believe it is. So going back onto the book of uh, Isaiah 63, uh, 60, Isaiah 55, and uh, two, it says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which, which is not bread, and you labor for that which is uh, satisfied not? Hearken diligently unto me and eat that of which is good, right? Which is what the, the, the word of the heavenly Father. And let your souls be, uh, let yourself, your souls satisfy itself in fatness, the fatness of the world, the abundance of the healing that comes by way of this world. You're gonna change your diet, up, and that's gonna benefit you. You're gonna run your household. I mean, Jake, Jake is, I mean, Jake, man, Jake, Jake is something else, man. A hell of a lot of the problems that Jake has is through their own doing. Okay, a hell of a lot of the different situations that Jake be having, maybe they're at a job and they complain, oh, this guy's always getting on me, but he's getting on you because you're always late. That's how, that's how the, that's the mentality of the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. Or they, they just want to be the victim all the time, like, like, like Esau, like you or your father, the devil, Esau wants to be the victim all the time, even though he's the one that created the problem in the, in the first day going place, man. Okay? But when you come into this world, you start taking responsibility for your actions and through that, you know, you get the abundance of what? Uh, you get the abundance of uh, 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 that you're soaking the light in, right? And it says, incline your ear uh, and come unto me here and your soul shall live. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with you, right? Even the short mercies of David, which is going to be the re-establishment of the covenant, right? But it's going to be via Yahweh Shai, which I'm going to read it here within the book of Hebrews 12, uh, 8 and 8. It says, uh, for finding fault with them. Uh, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. It says, The Lord, uh, for this covenant I will make with the house of Israel, and after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. Okay, so that's going to be the everlasting covenant. And that's going to make it to where we got a heart of flesh. We're going to be doing right by the Heavenly Father day in, day out. And in so doing right by the Heavenly Father day in, day out, He was never going to cast, it, cast us away. And we was going to be established forever and ever and ever. Okay. Uh, behold, I have given Him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Uh, behold, thou shalt call a nation, thou, sh thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. And that nation uh, knew, uh, not thee shall uh, run unto thee because of thy, uh, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, and for the for holiness, for the Holy One of Israel, right? Bit of a tongue twister there. He has glorified thee. And that's dealing with what? That's dealing with the uh, diaspora of the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Where with what? 
we was liking unto a nation that that that, that, that were not known, right? Pretty much. You had a situation where what we was we was distance away from from the truth or the heavenly father, and 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 and, and, and uh, uh, by reason of that, we became like a uh, like a no nation, or like a no people. Right, but in coming back onto the heavenly father, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna get our heritage back. It says, Seek ye the Lord whilst he may be found, call ye upon him while he's near, let the wicked forsake his way, and let the righteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the heavenly father, and he he will have mercy upon him, right? To our power, uh, for he will abundantly pardon. Okay, my thoughts are not your thoughts, right? Uh, um, and your neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord, for my for, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher uh, than your thoughts. Right, for the rain, as the, for as the rain. So this is the point I wanted. And this encompasses all the whole sermon, and I'm gonna close it here on this. It says, for as the rain cometh down, right, so the rain comes down from the skies. So as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but the water, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, and it may that it may give seed uh, to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. That goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that whereunto I, pl uh, I please, and it shall prosper uh, in, in, in the thing whereto I sent. And that's it. That's the that's the whole gig. Okay, the Lord's put forth His word out there. Okay, about Esau's judgment, about the judgment of the twelve tribes of Israel, about um, the whole uh, process and how this thing was going to go out there. The prophecies are gone out there. I mean, you got people talking about those are old time Bible times, old times are Bible times, and that's by way of what the the, the words of the Heavenly Father, and the words of the Heavenly Father are going out there. It's been written within the Scriptures, and guess what? It ain't gonna return unto Him voice. So, uh, with that, I'm gonna say all praise unto Yahweh Hashem, Yahshai Hashem, Makar Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles, a great millstone. Honesty, brothers, that be pushing this truth in sincerity. Shalom.